Is it possible to create static objects in Unreal that can compete with Maya and Blender? Well, honestly, I've been testing this tool for some weeks and I have to tell you, guys, I think the answer is yes. And if there are some features that Unreal is still not covering with these modeling tools, I bet that they will do so in the future. But today, if you want to create top-notch assets for your video games, I think that these tools will help you big time. This is the first video of a series that I'm preparing to present you these modeling tools that are available from Unreal 5.1. I was inspired by a series of tutorials I watched about intro to level design that Unreal released around eight years ago. Let's see what I can do with this new baby in 2023. Let's get into the modeling in action. But before that, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and a comment on my channel. Also, don't forget to join our mailing list on woolen.com to get our video game related courses with coupons only available to our subscribers. Our next course is about level design and you will receive a discount code in release week only by subscribing to woolen.com, which by the way, is free. To start this process, I'm going to open the Epic Games, go to library, and in library, I'm going to launch 5.3, the current version of Unreal. Then I'm going to select games, in games, first person, ray tracing, and the name of the project is going to be modeling project and create. Once the project is open, the first thing I'm going to check is that I have all the modeling tools that I need. So let's go to edit, plugins, and here I will write modeling. And I have these first two beta versions, the, mod, the modeling tool editor mode and the static mesh modeling mode. I'm going to select this one and I'm going to accept that this is a beta version and I have to be careful in the use of it. So let's say yes. And before restarting, I'm also going to check the UV editor, which is this one, to have it as well. Now I'm going to restart the project. Now that I have my project restarted and all the plugins that I require, you can visit. This is the basic first person scene created by Unreal. So you can play it. Here you are. You can select even this weapon and shoot. I'm going to escape. And now what I'm going to do is in the content, I will create a new folder for my scene. So I'm going to say game. I like to have this kind of order. And now I will go to File, New Level, a basic level, Create. And here I have my level. Let's save the level right away. Save Current Level, End Game. And I'm going to call this Modeling Level. And Save. To start this process, I am going to select and delete this floor. And now you can see to the left that I have the modeling option available. This is what I'm going to use to create the new model. Originally, in the previous versions of Unreal, we used the selection tool and usually we get to the geometry and added boxes or any other element that we needed and we play with this structure. This is not how we're going to do it here. Now, what we're going to do is to use the modeling tools. As soon as you select the modeling tools, you have this tab on the side. I can click and I can in fact pin it. Right now I want to pin it. I don't want the windows to close. And let's start the process. The first element I'm going to add is the box. To select the box, you just have to click here and then you move to the scene and you can see that you already have a box on the scene. I'm going to click it and now I'm going to set some parameters for it. In this case, I'm going to change this to 500, 500 and 20. So width and depth 500 and height is going to be 20. Accept, F to get close to it. And now let me set the locations to 0, 0, 0. F to see the location. And this is the starting point. On the top of the screen, we can see that we have enabled our snap tool. This will allow us to move any structure using a specific measure, in this case, 10. So every time we move some structure is going to be by 10. I'm going to reset this one and using the Alt key and left clicking, I am going to create another one just like this one. And I'm going to now snap it 
just beside it. So let's get here and they are both a snap. Now I'm going to select these two and I'm going to move to another position and I'm going to repeat the process to create two more. So I'm going to move these ones using the Alt key and now I am going to snap them. So here's the base floor that we are going to use with four different elements. Now I am going to add another block to insert the walls. So with box, I'm going to use the box. I'm putting it here, but the structure of the wall or the size of the wall is going to be a bit different. So let's say here that this is going to be 500. The next one in depth is going to be 20 and the other is going to be 300. So we have the structure of a wall. Now I want to, as I did a moment ago, I want to snap this wall to the sides of my structure. So let's go in here and put it onto this position. If you want to have a very clear perspective and be sure of how this wall is looking, you can go to this section where it says maximize or restore this viewport. And then you can see the viewport in different positions. So let's see, let's say that I want to check the walls and see that the walls are in the right perfect position. So here you have two views, one from the top and one from the right. And I can go very close to any of these perspectives. In fact, I can just open one of these perspectives and saying, yes, I want exactly the wall on this position. Then I can go back to my original design. This is a very nice trick that I use to confirm that things are exactly where I want them to be. I'm going to repeat this process of regenerating a new element using Alt, and I'm going to move the wall using the Snap as well to this position. And now I'm going to select these two walls using the shift key and clicking over them. And then with the alt, I will move them as well to the other side. Let me move a bit away so I can see exactly where I am setting them. And this looks pretty cool. If you want to confirm the position, again, you can go to this and see that the positions are correct. Fantastic. I am going to complete this section by adding an extra walls on the back. So I'm going to take these two. And with Alt click, I am going to create a new one. And then I am going to rotate this entire structure. I'm going to use E. And as you can see, we also have this snap here for rotation. I can in fact say I want to rotate 45 degrees and they will snap to 45. So this is 45 and now we have 90, which is perfect, exactly what I needed. Now I'm going to position them on the back exactly where I want them. And let me move them to the back as well. And here we have the walls pretty much where they should be. In fact, I can put in a bit inside. Perfect. Now they're looking just perfect. The next step is going to be to uh, select some of these walls. I'm going to select this group here. And I'm going to create a copy of them. I'm going to leave this one away. And I'm going to create a copy of them and moving up. So keeping the Alt key down, I'm going to select this to create a copy. And now I can place them exactly where they should be here. So we have a different, uh, I think we could call like two floors a structure. My next goal is to extrude this section, but only this face. I want to extrude it until this position. Going back to the modeling tool, I will select model. And in model, I will select the polygroup edit and the section that says extrude. I am going to select the face that I want to extrude. And then you can see, if we are getting a bit closer, you can see that we can extrude different sections. We can extrude in this direction, this one, or this one, X, Y, or Z. I want to extrude just in this position. So let's try it. As you can see, it is also snapping to the same settings that we have here. Now, if I decided to accept these changes, as you can see, everything breaks. Why this is happening? 
Let me go, Coven set. As you can see here in the outliner, all these walls are named on this section. Let's select this one. If we go to the mesh, which is on this part, let's gonna click the mesh, you will see that all meshes that are related to the wall has the same identification. Let me open here a bit more. So this mesh is this one, this mesh is this one, all meshes are exactly the same. What does that mean is that if you change one of the meshes, then you're going to change them all at the same time. The solution is to select the mesh in this case that I want to make different to the rest of them. And then I will go to Xform, duplicate, accept. And now, as you can see here, a new mesh was created. Now I can go to the modeling, Polygroup Edit, Extrude, select this one, this face, moving on to this position. And now when I click Accept, only this mesh is changed or update. And as you can see here on the meshes, now you have two different types of meshes. Now I am going to select these three elements of the floor and using Alt, I'm going to move them to the top even in, in this section, and now we have this kind of closed room. There is a small difference here that I'm going to fix using what I explained a moment ago. I'm going to select this one, this new static mesh, and I'm going to polygon, extrude, and in this case, I'm going to move this face just until here. And now we have the entire floor completely ready. In the next section, we are going to create some windows and doors to this room. Keep yourself ready for the next updates. Please leave your comments and thoughts. You have the power to complement my ideas, ask questions, and bring more information that others might need. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm preparing more of real content that will help you in the process of starting your first experience with this amazing tool. I'll see you later. Cheers.